Bowling Green. So my, on my father's side, uh, his father was an immigrant from Eastern Europe, um, yeah, from Poland, who you know fled during a time in which um, Jews faced a lot of discrimination and persecution. And my grandmother also came from Poland, and uh, unfortunately, um, the rest of her family, except for one sibling, um, perished in the Holocaust. But I grew up identifying with immigrant grandparents and immigrant great-grandparents. And so to be in one of the communities where my family came from Europe and first settled, um, is a and to be talking about um, America and our being a, a nation of immigrants and being a welcoming nation, is, it is a real privilege to stand here. It would be unfathomable for either my great-grandparents, uh, Harry Barron, who came to Bowling Green, or Morris and uh, Anna Tabachman, who came to Detroit, to think that their um, great-grandson or grandson would have, um, you know, I got to go to a, a lead private boarding school, Cranbrook in Detroit, I got to go to two incredible universities, I got to be um, a state representative in the majority leader in the state house of Michigan, the kind of um, American success story that our family has experienced in two or three generations was unknowable to those uh, immigrants in the late 19, 1800s, early 1900s who came to America. And when I work on immigration every day, whether it's about Iraqi refugees coming or Syrian refugees coming to Detroit, whether it's about uh, Mexican Americans in my own neighborhood, I. Um, just recognize and think of the incredible uh, opportunities and, and uh, dreams that they will fulfill here in Detroit, Bowling Green, and across our country. Um, but it's a real privilege because I often mention uh, Morris de Bachman in talking about my own identity as an American and about welcoming to be able to talk about the Barons. For uh, I don't often get that opportunity, and um, and I know. Um, so I want to thank um, everyone who invited me. It was, uh, and, and those who were on those emails, Beatrice and Brittany Ford and others, will let you know that I instantly, um, and I say no to a lot of folks about, because I have two little kids at home, but the opportunity to come to Bowling Green, I was like, to talk about immigration, are you kidding me? I will do that in a second. Um, and it's a real point of privilege to do that. And I want to thank all the work that's already been done by the Human Relations Committee, a commission, the city council, the mayor, uh, the folks at um, Conexion, uh, and that is also happening in Toledo and Lucas County. And um, so the story of my family roots is not only did my great-grandfather settle here, and then um, my grandfather met my grandmother here, and while they settled in Toledo, eventually my grandfather um, went into business for himself and created a stamping plan. He also was very active in the community as a business person and um, was asked at one point to serve on the board of directors at Bowling Green Bank and Trust and um, invested in the bank as well. And that grew and got acquired by a bank called Midam. And so I'm really here repaying um, the stock that uh, paid for my college education. Uh, the Midam stock that really uh, provided probably half the money uh, it took to send me to college. So um, before I start, and I know we're gonna talk about immigrant welcoming, what I have found in the last eight years working at Global Detroit and with some national partners at Welcoming America is that immigrant welcoming works best when it is rooted within our own identity, within our own community, within our own national character. And our national character is very much um, being discussed around this country wherever you go. There are some very distinct views about what it means to be an American and who we are as a people. And um, while I suspect in the next two or three years we may get beyond the kind of um, critical debate we're having right now about immigrants and refugees, um, Bowling Green and the new Americans who come to Bowling Green and Wood County will be here beyond this, this sort of temporary debate. And so I think when we think about what it means to uh, welcome newcomers, um, it really ought to be rooted in what we aspire to be as communities. And so I'm going to talk tonight about the economics of welcoming, um, but
but I think it'll work best if you're coming not as just a, a listener to some guy in a suit from Detroit coming down and talking about his great-grandparents and grandparents and their connection to Bowling Green. It'll work best when you actually bring um, your own community concerns, visions, and aspirations. So before I even go any further, um, actually, you could advance it one slide. Um, I'm going to talk about this growing movement of immigrant economic development. And so these stars is a little bit outdated because we have probably another five stars on this map. But these are um, communities that I get to partner with, including uh, Lucas County, Toledo Lucas County, and hopefully Bowling Green, but also um, Dayton, Cincinnati, Columbus, Akron, and Cleveland, um, and uh, 15 or so other communities across this region, which we sometimes call the Rust Belt, sometimes we call the Great Lakes region. Some people don't live near the lakes, they don't like that name, so we usually use Rust Belt, Heartland, whatever you want. Um, but these are all communities that on their own have done uh, something similar to what Bowling Green has done with a welcoming resolution. These are communities that on their own have decided that they, it is in their own self-interest to be welcoming to immigrants and newcomers. And so, um, before we get to all the reasons why um, and, and, and the, the economics behind it and what does that mean, I want you to spend a second and to turn to the person next to you. We're going to take about a minute so you have a little bit of time. And I want you to think of one or two things that are important to Bowling Green and to the future. That uh, in the economic context would work best, but where do you think this community is going? Where ought it go? What are some of the opportunities that lay in front of it economically and as a community? And what are some of the challenges? And just share what is at the top of your mind when you think in the next five to 10 years, what does Bowling Green need to do to be a prosperous place? Uh, and just turn to your neighbor and, and if you could share that for just a second and then uh, we'll, we'll, I'll convene you back together if there's some ideas. Because that actually also really helped me focus on um, my remarks because I could talk about everything from agriculture to high tech and how immigrants play a role. But it works best when I know what you guys see as your future. So take a second, turn to the person next to you and just share um, where you think the community is going. 